And we are back. No messing around. No dilly-dallying for this one. We have skipped the queues with a fast pass straight into Consulate, Tim. Oh, we don't mess about here in Latam, Jackie. You know that. We are all action all the time. Breakneck speed beginning to end. And that is what Santos have just come a cropper with. I think they might have whiplash after that last matchup, Jackie. Certainly a problem on a roller coaster or two there. A little bit quick for them. Maybe a queasy stomach coming into Consulate. Oh, yeah. You know what that was? That's one of those rides you go on that spins, but because they've only gone it with two people, it's weighted down one of the sides more than the other, so you've just perpetually spun round and round the entire time. You just feel awful. Oh, they've had a nightmare on the waltzers. Oh, mate, yeah. Genuinely. If it's one of those situations, right, they've gone on the teacups, they've been given it, hands are quite literally got calluses. You've peeled the skin up, it's a nightmare. How... How exactly will Theme Park affect this matchup here on console? Santos, they have to be smarting after that last matchup. They were rank amateurs against the big boys, essentially. They really struggled to get themselves into the gunfights, into the map in any way meaningful sort of shape or form. It was a real tough one for Santos. And I don't know exactly what they're going to find differently here on console. I would normally say that coming in on the defence would be a bit of a bonus for them, but Consulate is one of the few maps where we see the attackers generally coming in and doing reasonably well, if not having the advantage. And Team Liquid, as we've said, very familiar with this map. We've seen some really big players previously. If you remember one back in Stage 1, Jackie, where we had it was Sexy Cake and Nesk just absolutely tearing around the map, just getting killed left, right, centre. Pump out, spawn peak, everything you could think of. Oh, mate, they were going wild. They were going for all of the high-octane plays. They were trying to really show the heart and spirit of LATAM, the true aggression that we see coming out from these Brazilian teams on a day-to-day -day basis. But we're back in. The basis for this matchup is Liquid on the attack, Santos on the defense. If you feel like this is going to be a response from Santos, tweet in and let us know. Hashtag BR6. We'll be putting up some of the tweets throughout the stream up on screen. Ooh, and it looks like we've got one coming in now, Tim. I'm sure it'll fire up any second now. Producer Simon working hard in the background, not only to bring us your tweets, but to bring us, along with the team, just improvement after improvement here to the English-speaking broadcast. There we go, liquid liquidating. That is a very good way of putting it, Santos. They've been thrown into the blender here, Jackie, and put on max speed. But mighty, he will blend PSK right into the ground here to start things off on Consulate. That is the Jaeger going to work and Hibana is off the board now they still have the hard breach capability of ace on sexy kick so that garage door can be opened and let me tell you the garage site is one that team liquid do tend to excel in attacking very good at getting the diffuser down and active on the ground but it's pension is going to have to be paid to top floor and that is exactly what is coming in from palu on the zafia he's going to try and track the man down and that is not who you want on the hunt if you are trying to stay out on a roll and if the question was will it blend it's certainly a resounding yes that's psk dust don't breathe that. And hopefully we can have the side of Liquid take a big, deep breath and get themselves back in the game as this one's starting to slip away from them. Another frag is found for Mighty, making a case for himself now into the round. Liquid down to a three versus five. Time's ticking by, a minute and 15 seconds on the clock as Sexy Cake has only taken his first couple of steps in towards Yellow Stairs. Palu on the roam, suspicious about the idea of someone hiding towards the style staircase, but he won't spot anyone out. Roams around, peers in close towards Piano as well, but does he realize someone is lurking in the toilets? There's the peek from Mighty. Goes back for the follow-up face as well. A lot of confidence in him, but it's not gonna work out as he will get put down into a shallow grave it leaves us here three players alive for liquid versus the four man roster of santos with 40 seconds to commit to a plant but oh look tim the diffuser is miles away 
Diffuser miles away and bodies dropping left, right and centre as Wag will get the kill onto Palu. Now, we saw an interesting use of uh, the Banshee there. I think it was actually placed in and around the round desk just to support that roam of Mighty. And what a good job it did. He managed to get himself two really big impact frags at the beginning of this round. But Team Liquid, they just keep fighting their way back into this. Two versus three. Diffuser now in hand. 15 seconds. It could be the clock that is the real enemy here. Can they get in and get the Diffuser down? Down. Sexy Kirk is going to move himself around and through that smoke utility. Gets himself a fantastic kill. Can he get the second? Yes. That's now one versus Ooh. two. And this is going to be tricky. Sexy Kirk starts getting that diffuser down. Needs to be challenged. Cypress, one versus one, comes in to get him. The man comes off the diffuser, but not quick enough to be able to get that ADS snapped in. And it's Cypress ultimately able to shut him down and will disable that diffuser. But what a fight Team Liquid made of that one, Jackie. Oh, mate, the difference that even just a few milliseconds would have made there. He could have got himself into a position to take that peak. Instead, he was allowed to come off the diffuser. He was given just enough time, but the response was better from Santos. They clean up in the last few seconds there once it had gone down, and they do take the first round. A big improvement from what we saw, of course, on the first map of Theme Park, but that is only the first round. Over the course of both maps now, they've got a grand total of two rounds achieved for liquid you can only imagine that this is going to instigate a fire in them tim because that round was spicy from the start all the way down to the end really was and sexy cake made an absolute effort at the end of it didn't he i really thought he might just achieve that there but Ultimately, the uh, greater hit point total left for Cyprus really told the day there and very difficult coming out of that diffuser animation to get straight back into the fight at that sort of speed. Every advantage was with Cyprus and he used them to great effect. Now, we're going to be heading into round two. This is going to be press and lobby that we're going to this time around. So interesting choice from Santos. They are not going to be heading up to the generally more popular top floor for this. They will be heading to the mid floor. It will still involve a lot of utility and defense of top floor, generally speaking, for an attack of this site. It's usually a push into admin from the attackers, which is the room on the right-hand side of your map. Get two or three in there, sweep across this top floor from east to west, clear everybody out as you go, use the vertical angles to get control generally over the round desk, sort of main reception area, get a diffuser down, and then watch it from two locations, usually one above and usually one from outside of double door on a really nice long angle. Okay, so round two. In terms of who my money's on early on, I'm looking over towards PSK, Nex, and Sexy to potentially do a little bit of damage. When you look at this here, you have a trifecta of quick boys on that roster. All three of them can do some damage with the sheer speed they could take to a round, but they're not getting overconfident. They haven't sprinted to the unknown immediately and offered up an early chance for Santos to net an initial frag. Instead, still sticking to the basics, draining out, being able to use that information that they recover to assist themselves later on to clear clear the angles bit by bit for santos's roam game though i'm curious to see what actually mighty and both cyprus could potentially get up to here especially for the malusi obviously once you get those banshees down you can just run out you can do something crazy if you want to this is a wide line of sight as well from mighty over towards the stairway seeing if anyone is coming up from down below but for now tim they stick themselves into some fairly stable positions just establishing control of the roof and not going for anything too crazy here on liquid yet the old upside down repel just to keep an eye on those potential jump outs. We can see the ping 2.0 being used to highlight that ADS there. Now, we've still got defenders present in and around those visa stairs. They are going to drop back as pressure mounts. Moringa will take himself down with a nade. And I'm just sort of wondering if we're seeing a shift in momentum for Team Liquid here, Jackie. It was great late from Santos in the first round. Now a slight mistake from Moringa there as he takes himself out with a nade. Once again puts Team Liquid on the back foot. We're a minute and ten in. I wouldn't say there's too much progress for him being made. We've still got Mighty up at the top of Spiral Stairs. We've got Scardinia still in meeting and Liquid they're a little bit out in the cold here in terms of approaching or getting any sort of control over site or a potential plant spot. Yeah, this is uh, 
really quite a scary prospect to be in. This is looking more like the liquid of old, where we've seen them get into some of those rounds where they do leave it a little bit too late to go for a bold play. Luckily enough, you've got some players that certainly can be bold and brash when they need to. Palu with an entry frag, but here's the response, the run out. Look at the lunatic. He's doing something illegal, might he? Straight out the window, slaughters them all. Here comes Cypress to the party as well, and it's all left on PSK with no chance of securing victory on this one as Wag comes round. Looking like some grade A Wagyu beef. That was a tasty kill with Big Papa Pump on the yellow stairs. Santos, two rounds now. Certainly serves them up a steak there and then demolishes it in front of him. Jackie takes it to the table. He's ready to serve it, but he says, no, not today. And he just devours it in front of them as he closes out the round and leaves Liquid wondering what exactly just happened. You'd be scratching your heads. You'd be sat there just going, this is ridiculous. Imagine a waiter brings you food and just eats it in front of you. Oh, mate. Yeah, you'd be absolutely mind boggled. I don't think you'd ever reco recover. <laughs> you'd never go to a restaurant again. Oh, man. I'd be terrified. It's like, you ever been to the beach, got yourself some chips, and you're just walking back to your family. You can see them in the distance, like just over the road, right? You're waving, they're waving. Out of nowhere, whoo, swoop in, dive bomb of seagull. Chips are gone. I've, I, I know exactly what you speak of, Jackie. I've never had it happen with chips, but I did have it happen with a sausage roll once. And let me tell you, I was devastated. Mate, that's the thing. You're fuming. Because obviously, to that seagull, he's not even really going to enjoy it. Sure, he knows it's food, but it's not as if he's like, oh, a bit of Greg's. You know what I mean? Absolute nightmare. <laughs> Oh, that's what Liquid are having right now, though. They've been swooped in by the Santos Seagulls. They have stolen their sausage. And they need to try and get it back. They're going to have to tussle with the Seagull, which is never an easy fight to get involved into. They can peck you. They've got fairly big beaks. But will that beak assist them into this third round? Santos, can they keep up the tempo, Tim, and take it 3-0? and oh, Or will Liquid finally wake up here on Consular? Well, we've got Oryx on the board for Cyprus. It's an operator I've... If you've watched Latam before, I'm sure you've heard me speak about it. Every time he gets chosen, I like mm -hmm. to highlight it because I love to watch Oryx. Just that vertical mobility for a defender. It's something that nobody else on the defensive lineup can do. If you're not aware, Oryx is an operator who has a number um, of sort of strings to his bow, but basically his ability is to run. It's to run really fast. It's to run fast enough that he can actually bust his way through soft surfaces. So he can relocate himself from room to room through soft walls very quickly. But he also has another ability, which we've just seen beautifully timed there. And that is that he can jump up hatches and it just gives him great vertical mobility. And on a site like Consulate, on a map like Consulate, sorry, that can be really, really differential because... There is a lot of hatches that mean you can move quickly from one site to another. Now, Moringa, he's going to shut down Wag and then be closed out by Scardinia in a nice trade. And that is something, again, that Santos are doing very well here so far. And that is hitting those trades, not allowing themselves to be taken advantage of too much. Ness gets in with a kill onto Mighty and Liquid are fighting hard here, looking to get themselves back. But Cyprus, he's still out on the roam and could still do some damage here. He could pop up on an unexpected flank quite easily. Unless Team Liquid are expecting the unexpected. For Sexy Cake right now, though, being a bit of a information play automaton, as the drone will roam, we'll see Nesk coming in with the kill onto the big man himself. So no play from Oryx, nothing outrageous from the speedy boy, as he will be shut down, leaving us into a two versus four. Outnumbered two to one. With about a minute left on the clock, this is where things really start to get rough. Scardino actually should win this encounter, though, versus the Zofia. Pika's advantage just comes around the corner, and he'll go down, leaving it all on rise. Major Maestro, can he conduct Santos toward a third round victory, or is this going to be Liquid locking it down? It would have to be a one versus three clutch scenario here. All of the cards are stacked against him. And he is debating what positions could be in play here. Clearing out on the close angle. Does spot out another man as Ash ooh, extends into the fight, but gets hit straight in the noggin. The bullets are going to break her, and it will leave it down to a 1v2. 26 seconds left on the clock, but no HP for Rise. Not looking like he's fueled with confidence in this one. And as he peeks, it's an easy frag for PSK. A simple headshot, and the first round for Liquid. 
Rise Rose about as well as a loaf of bread without any yeast in there that time. Jack here really struggled. 1v3 always a big ask and he wasn't able to match up to that very high bar this time around. Liquid getting in, Sexy Cake focusing on the objective, getting that diffuser down and a successful attack for them onto Archives and Tellers. It's going to leave us heading back to Garage in round number four. And this time, Liquid have to deal with Mighty. If you remember back in round one, we saw Mighty just absolutely dominating. We get a great replay there of Moringa just taking down Wag to start the round off. It was a real beauty across Garage onto the pipes area. Didn't get much of a view of the pulse, but certainly managed. Maybe maybe the, uh, the light reflected off the old head there, Jack. It's uh, something I've unfortunately experienced once or twice. Fortunately, I've never been headshotted on the back of it. No. No, no. I mean, I, I do remember once, one Christmas, a very long time ago, Tim, my, my father used to be a bald man. He might still be bald. I'm not sure. Uh, it was Christmas, and he asked my brother for some of the whipped cream. But you see, my brother was quite a devious young man at the time. So rather than offering him the whipped cream, Tim, he, he just sort of spat some whipped cream back at my father. It went over the top of his head, somewhat like a bald ramp for Hot Wheels, but just with whipped cream. And it, it kind of launched off into the distance and landed somewhere in the kitchen. I mean, it certainly sounds like Christmas, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Genuinely. That was one of the good ones. Uh, <laughs> right, then. Round four. Who's going to get a Christmas present of another round stuffed in their stockings? Will it be Team Liquid or can Santos get themselves a third? Good response back there from Liquid, of course. Keeping the game in close, Nick, and keeping it competitive with the way they've been playing it on the attack. They do switch things up once again, though, in terms of the operator picks they've been going for. They have been adapting fairly nicely, and it seems like there is another stocking stuffer, Tim, as we've got a tweet coming in from Fraser. Fraser, he's a big name in the UK community. Many of you may know him. I am sure very involved in Siege. Does a bit of casting himself as well. Recently did the community night that we had back on Friday, but um, very kind words from Fraser. Much appreciated, my friend. Um, you know, we're just here. We're having fun. We, me and Jackie have fallen hook, line and sinker. We are head over heels in love with Latam. And how could you not be? We just get to sit here. We get a front row seat and we get to bring all the excitement and passion along with it. And believe me, it is absolutely no effort for us whatsoever. But thank you very much for the kind words. Oh, yeah. It's always a good day when we get to rant and rave about LATAM plays. It's what gets me up in the morning. And for the side of Team Liquid, the question is, are they going to stay awake in this round? Or will they be put back to bed, tucked in with a goodnight kiss from the roster of Santos? As there's, there's about a minute and 35 left as time slowly starts to tick by. Waiting to see where these rotations will come from. They've established control towards the second floor, so they do at least have that to work with to their benefit as they want to rotate round and get closer towards the site as time is ticking by. PSK's line coming into play as well to give information across they've now got a read in go the concussions you have to peek off the back of it it doesn't work much like daredevil my e he's able to fight through the blindness as he beheads nesk cracking him over the top with those nunchucks and moves on for another fight but it won't work out too well for him they've been stunted into the round now with both palu and moringa finding a frag apiece tim mighty just closing his eyes there trying to increase the difficulty and still manages to take nest down sometimes if you get flashed there's a lesson to learn there full white just keep shooting because who knows at the end of the day one of those bullets could land and nesk came off the worst for it moringa able to get the trade though leaving us now in a4 versus three effectively three versus three with moringa down on the ground down but not out and will be collected that could be a smart move you never know what that teammate is going to accomplish once you've brought them back moringa on 20 health he'll be one bullet away from death but he will be able to deal in death himself now the vertical fight is is going on we can see bullets raining back and forth damage done on both sides wago having to dip himself away on the smoke and rise it will be picking up sexy cake with the next kill that is diffuser down on the ground a double from psk though gets the diffuser in hand he comes in single-handedly to try and close this one out oh. palu on the cover shuts the man down wag is gone and palu finishes off the round for team liquid who leveled things up square it away to all here on consulate game is tied back up Getting closer. They're leaving some of those heart attack rounds into the mix that keep you guessing right down to the wire. 
But this time, it is a successful play from Liquid. Obviously, Liquid, they won very dominantly back on Theme Park. It was a hell of a game from them. They dropped one round. It was their first opening round, opening round on the attack where things just went a little bit screw if. This time around, it's been better from the side of Santos. They've been going blow for blow. They're keeping the overall game competitive. Curious to see how it's going to end up. These last two rounds are pretty vital. They'll shape up the half here. We'll see if this is going to be a close free free or if there is potential for one of our two teams to build themselves a bit of a lead. Maybe snatch away the following two rounds before the side switch and give themselves a big buffer at least. For Santos, I feel like it is pivotal. They get at least the free free half, Tim. I reckon that's where they do have a fighting chance. If they don't, Liquid, we know what they're like when they're on defense. It is hard to get them out. Of positions they're very effective at playing crossfires they have a great understanding of team synergy and they just hit their shots oh absolutely team liquid are a nightmare to face on defense on consulate they've got such a good understanding of this map they'll bring the aggression they'll be unpredictable they'll jump out they'll peek you they'll just be absolutely everywhere and they'll just make you feel smothered if nothing else it really will and you know like when you wake up in the middle of the night deep under the duvet jackie and you don't know which way is up that is oh. exactly how it would feel just hot stuffy and just a real pressure situation Oh, mate, it's like when you decide to have a half an hour nap and you wake up and you're just in a different dimension. I once I once slept on the top bunk of a bunk bed um, and it was actually surround, half surrounded was, was the top. I don't know how best to explain this. So where my head was, there was a wall down the, each side of me to halfway down the bed. So I was, in effect, slept in a half box, effectively. So right. I woke up in the middle of the night, it's pitch black, and my hand reaches out to one side, there's a wall. It reaches out to the next, <laughs> there's a wall. So I start like patting down the wall, but it goes much further than I remember. Uh. The terror was real. I, I honestly thought at that point that I'd like gone asleep and woken up in a coffin or something. I was absolutely ter I didn't go back to sleep for the night. Oh, mate, that would be panic. That honestly, would be sheer was. panic. I was sweating. Oh, no. Well, Wagyu on the smoke, he knows how that feels. He's been put into a bunk bed with walls all around it, but they put a lid Silly on design. top of that. Oh, mate, that, that does sound like some sort of ridiculous pitch there. So it was on a boat, to be fair. It's obviously limited space, and, they, you know, they fit a bed where they could. Um, but, yeah, it was absolutely terrifying. I didn't sleep up there again. No. No, I, I don't blame you. I'd be on the floor, mattress on the floor. I'd take my chances and just uh, see how that works out. And let's see how this is going to work out. Of course, it is a five versus four right now. Santos suffered a opening death in the initial encounter. Liquid going to be licking their lips about the outcome of potentially being able to steal away a third round here against the defending side of Santos. Mighty, though, could make a bit of a mockery out of them. It feels like he should have hit his shots there, Tim. He had the opening opportunity. He got first contact. But what it comes down to is PSK punishing him. I'm not sure about the combination of PSK's skins there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ruby with the uh, the purple attachments is an interesting combination. Scardinia gets one, gets two with a big jump out onto Ness. And that is going to level things up. That could be a real hero play for Santos here. Just bringing them back and squaring things up. A third on the round will be shut down in a trade by Moringa, but not before he has done potentially critical damage to the Team Liquid attack. Oh my god. Two versus two, but one man knocked clean off his feet. Rise won't be rising up out of his grave as he has been double tapped. They've made sure he's dead, but a man that can do that just as well is Cypress. On the Malusi, trying to run. Wanted to get into the toilet to keep herself alive, but gets caught off by Palu, spotted out by the Zofia. And it'll end his life. A clean connection there at the last possible second. They get themselves the third round. It came down to a 1v1. But in the end, you can always count on the main man, Palu the Punisher. Coming into the final round of the half, then we find ourselves 3-2 to Liquid. And I've said it before, Jackie, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. Team Liquid, they're never on stop, are they? Only no. ever paused, and that is what we saw. Look at this jump out. Beautiful replay captured um, there by Jacob. Thank you very much for that. Scardinia just absolutely hammering them in the mid-round there with a big 3K, but it just wasn't enough at the end. And as I say, Team Liquid, never on stop, only ever paused, and that is what we saw at the beginning of this round. And 
Round three onwards, certainly the play button has been hit once again. I think fast forward might have even been caught along the way, Jackie, and we are whipping through things at double speed right now. Oh, no. They haven't gone for the Be Kind Rewind. You know, they, they've handed back in that VHS or Betamax, potentially. And there's a lot, there, there is a lot of people watching right now who have absolutely no idea what you're on about, Jackie. Oh, probably. I wouldn't be surprised, especially with Betamax. I'd probably be like, what? What on earth is a Betamax? Is that some kind of, of demon from the Shadow Realm? I think just the whole thought process of going to a shop or a store and, and renting a film and bringing it home, that, that will be alien to, to many people watching, I'm sure. I saw a tweet about it where it was just like, come on, Nana, we've got to put you in the home. And the Nan's just going, no, Netflix did used to get delivered by mail with VHS. <laughs> true fact, true fact. <laughs> Round number six, we are coming into then 3-2. It is for Team Liquid, and they are starting to really find some momentum now. They'll be attacking onto Garage again, and as I say, this is historically a site that they are very, very capable at attacking. We haven't actually seen them win it so far today, so that does go some way towards saying just how well um, Santos are playing. I'm actually lying. We saw them win it in round four. I was thinking back to the sexy cake round where he was shut down by Cyprus at the end of the round, but that was back in round number one. So 50-50 so far. Liquid very capable of attacking here in Garage. If they can get themselves 4-2 on the half, you really have to start thinking that's going to be the end of things for Santos. But Mighty manages to come out with a good opener onto Sexy Cake. Shut down immediately in a trade by Paulu, though we find ourselves now very quickly. Four versus two. Things are falling apart here. PSK, he's getting the diffuser down and the head of Santos certainly seems to be going right now, Jackie. They are losing control. Their grip is loosening here and it is slipping away from them. PSK shuts it down with the final kill onto Wag and to be honest Santos they mounted very little resistance to that Team Liquid attack that's rough there wasn't much of a roadblock being put up on that one. Team Liquid were just allowed to cruise right on through. And from a position of them dominating, opening up with two very clean rounds, Liquid have brought it back now to a 4-2 to two split at the end of the half here. And that is worrying, especially based off what we saw from them on Theme Park. You're really going to have to fight tooth and now and give it your all from the get-go here coming into this next round. Tim, round seven genuinely could decide the game in my books. I feel like if Liquid open this up, we know what they're normally like on their defense. They could run away with this. I agree. I think if they come in successfully with one defense, 5-2, it's going to be too... It's, it's too much. It's insurmountable then um, for Santos. They need to be keeping themselves in touch. I think as long as they are within one round, then yes, there's always a chance. You know, they can always just flip around on its head, level things up and keep fighting into the next one. At 5-2, I just feel like that's too much because as I always do, I break down the map and I look at that situation and I think, right, Team Liquid, they will need two more rounds. They've successfully won in Garage, so what sites are left available to them? They've got Console, they've got Press and Lobby, they've got Archives and Tellers. Those would be the three sites available to them at that point. For anybody newer, very briefly, we play on a two-round rotation. So if they were to win here in Garage, they're not allowed to go back there for two rounds. So they'd have to go to some of the other three sites. But when I look at that, I think there's got to be at least one win in there for them somewhere, which gets them back to Garage. And that's your two rounds done. So once you get within that two, it's going to be very difficult for Santos. So, yeah, I think absolutely they need to come here. They need to get this garage wall open quickly. They need to get some kills. Great start from Wag on that front, taking Nesk out. That's one of the Romas down. Perfect start for Santos. That's an absolute dream. That, however, is not as PSK level things up. They can't allow Liquid to keep on with this war of attrition. They need to get themselves an advantage, get them down on the ground, boot on the neck before they start pushing in to get that diffuser down. The round slows down a little bit after we had those initial altercations with Nesk being sent off to the Shadow Realm and Mighty being sold to Sauron. Now we have nearly two minutes left here. 
And we should get contact once again. Of course, off the back of utilizing those drones, they have a smart read. Cypress is in a brilliant angle as well. But that's only from what's coming ahead of him. It's what's behind him that counts as Palu sneaks up, pounces like Palu the Panther, and rips him to pieces, going straight for the jugular. You've only got three players remaining now on the attacking side of Santos. They don't have an awful lot of time to try and recover from this position either. But that's one way to make some good moves back into the round. Rise. A clean connection there from the Habana. It almost feels like they're willing to give him another chance as well, but they will. Sexy peeked into him. Skadina goes for a face in the meantime against PSK. You can get yourself a third round here. It's all on Palu. He pulls out the shotty, but he isn't going to get a chance to sing his praises with a weapon. Instead, has to bait them out. Takes down a hole into the soft wall. Utilizing the nitro, casts it in. But hook, line, and sinker, he's the one that gets shipwrecked. Skadina, very clean round. Left dashed against the rocks, Team Liquid there. Certainly not in control of the tides this time around. And Santos get themselves a very important round, leveling things up almost now at 4-3. But as I said, vitally keeping themselves in touch. And that is exactly what was needed. Every round now is a victory for them. Every round is one closer to that required marker of seven, where they would then level things up and take a point away from Team Liquid, but there is a long way to go for them to do it just yet. Now, we're going to be heading up to the top floor. Console office will be the battleground this time around. We've got Sexy Cake picking up the pulse. I would imagine we are going to see that bold, beautiful man down in the basement, Jackie. He's going to be all the way down there in archives, just feeding information. And the utility, sorry, the, the use of that utility for pulse is particularly valuable here on Console. Even for a top floor holding, you you might be sat there thinking, Ace, what are you on about? Why are they going to play him all the way down in basement? And the reason that they will do that to begin with is that that heartbeat scanner can pick up to the rooftop pretty much on both walls. So if he gets himself over in archives, he can tell them straight away if there is an east side admin push coming. If he moves himself over to garage, again, he can tell them if there is a yellow stairs pushing incoming. And it just gives Liquid all that information that they need to know what to expect then value comes in the mid to late round from pulse he moves himself up into piano he's got the potential for that nitro denial as well if santos managed to get themselves into sight and start putting that diffuser down on the ground there is an awful lot of destructible floor between the mid floor and the top floor here on consulate so there is opportunities are plenty for sexy cake on the pulse one thing I want to make a little point out of as well at that prior round that it feels very uncharacteristic of the way Team Liquid normally play is the re-peak towards Yellow Stairs where they gave Rise two free entry frags essentially there in the late rounds. It's not a common mistake that they'll normally go for. They'll normally know how to readjust. They'll take a different angle in a firefight like that where you know he's already primed and ready on the angle, especially when he's got the opening pick off the back of it. That felt like the catalyst to a round that just fell out from underneath them. Hopefully that's a telltale sign of things to come. And at the course of the round so far, obviously we haven't had a casualty yet. No first blood, no entry frag. But Rise is back on our screens. He got two kills alone into that prior round. He's had four in total. Let's see if he can keep on adding a few more and get some more bang for his buck here in round eight. About a minute and 40 seconds left, taking map control little by little. Of course, they can slowly push their way through and roam around, clearing out the lower levels and working their way up. Boots on the ground in admin for Santos as well. So generally speaking, on a top floor push, you will see attention paid to either east or west side, either from admin or yellow stairs. This time, Santos have chosen to go for admin, so they are going to move themselves through, just clear out the Banshee. They're looking to get control over the vending machine area. They then get angles down past long desk, and they can start looking to move their way into meeting. But essential in order to do that is to move PSK from this location. He's got plenty of utility to help him stay entrenched in there one way of doing that is using the habana to open up an angle from copy room you get the explosives onto the long wall behind long desk basically exactly where psk is playing you open up a line of sight and he has to move away but 
that wall is electrified and there is no thatcher available as he's been banned out so they will have to try and deal with that utility if they wish to be able to do that and psk i can tell you now is going to be very difficult to shift look at that for an opener what a headshot onto wipe that is absolutely massive the skill to take an upside down repel and rip him down like that cannot be overstated that is clean and there is so much more cleaning to be done into this round and right now they are mopping them up santos they have been blown out of the server haban has been spotted a gun barrels given away the goose so if she does push psk should hit the shots and shut down the course of the round which he will moringa and palu for the final two frags team liquid get that one in the bag Oh, as soon as push came to shove, they hit their shots. They work like a well-oiled machine. Team Liquid right now are the five fingers on one very heavy hand. Team Liquid just absolutely washing Santos away there. There was nothing that they could do. That was all on Team Liquid's decision and command to shut that round down, starting with an absolutely beautiful, one of the best kills you will see today or potentially this week or this entire LATAM stage was that headshot from PSK. We've got it on the replay. Just look how little he sees of this man. We are talking pixels there. And just absolutely rips him off the rappel, Jackie. He says, not on my window and not on my watch. He is not having any of that. None of this ridiculousness. It is not going to occur here tonight. Liquid, they're putting their foot down. They're really showing that this game is over. If it was ever starting to get out of hand, now this is where they want to turn that around, you know, put a handbrake on, say no more. You've had your fun. Come on, we're going home now. The ball has well and truly been picked up and taken with them, Jackie. They are not playing any longer. They have had quite enough and they mean business right now. 5-3 heading back down to Garage. Now, to be fair to Santos back in round number seven, the first defensive round for Team Liquid. They did go to Garage and Santos were very capable in shutting them down. Wag got in and got the diffuser active on the ground. We saw Palu in a serious 1vx situation. I think it was 1v3 it finished up at the end and he could make real no real dent into that. He was just shut down quite easily as he tried to push back onto site. So very capable from Santos. They need to show us more of the same. They need to get in there, work quickly, get the access to site that they did last time and just get themselves that man advantage that's that's the rounds where they sort of have some joy really is when they get those opening kills think back to round one with mighty yeah. quick double no problem 5v3 santos managed to win from that sort of advantageous position it's when they lose those openers that they really start struggling round nine is this where things change can they actually get any of those entry frags that were really paying dividends throughout the entire course of the game so far or is it just going to be a bit more of Liquid again, turning them up and just shredding them to pieces, coming in like a shredder and leaving them out on the cold like paper that has been shredded, Tim. Just two minutes now left on the clock on this one as the rotation's going around. Sexy on a bit of a roam as he will reposition back over. Palu up towards the second floor as well. He's got a good angle in play and can get an awful lot of info from this. It's also the likelihood of him playing the post plant talking of which tim actually there could be some punishment coming out here sexy on the window over on the angle we do see in the distance cyprus laying down of course on the drone if she doesn't realize and begins to chance her luck pushing out she will get spotted i believe that ag was just going to be set up for the late round post plant though so the contact is unlikely Moringa opening things up for us with a kill on to Rise, and that is advantage once again to Team Liquid. And somewhat differently to last time we saw this. Now, the one positive, the tick in the box for Santos is that they have now got control over Piano. They've got Mighty in there on the sledge, and he's starting to open things up, but could be challenged by Sexy Cake here. I'm not sure if they saw him on the drone, but they're certainly aware of his presence. One way or another, Cypress shuts him down, but Moringa gets himself a second on the round. That is the sledge done, and largely anything not open opened up in piano will probably stay exactly as it is psk with a kill on to wag we find ourselves four versus two and the wheels are coming off for santos right now team liquid 
Wraith looking to push themselves forward and get themselves ever closer to that map win and the two maps overall three points and heading towards the top of the table clearing out that Banshee just to make access a little bit easier but it's going to take more than that for Santos Scardinia gets the ball rolling with a kill onto PSK but Aller leaves him now one versus three and there's an uphill to climb and he's knocked right down it by the big boots of Nesk as he comes in with a headshot. Goes tumbling all the way back to the beginning as Nesk cleans up there with another round and now puts Team Liquid teetering on a knife's edge to lock this one down and 2-0 the series. Yeah, a mass amount of points off the back of their debut into stage two of the BR6 and walk away with their heads held high into this one. It's now up to Santos to make a bit of a reverse sweep, cause some noise, bring the ruckus and see if Liquid can protect their necks or not. Because if they don't, that is going to be the end for Santos here in tonight's games. And we'll be moving on to our third and final best of two of the night. But it all comes down to if Liquid can lock it down or if they will struggle a little bit. If they won't be able to find the composure to pick up the final round right here and now. We are heading to archives and tell us then it will be the split site. Quite a common one. Um, we're certainly seeing a lot more of it worldwide, I think, at the minute. But in Latam, it's a very popular choice. A lot of teams really liking the archives and tell us. So if you've not seen too much of this site, what are we expecting? What would we usually see here? Well, for the attackers, the first step is generally to get into the top floor, usually get control over admin and start opening up those vertical angles into Visa and tell us the room that we are looking at right now. Once they've got that vertical control they will try to push the defenders away and then move downstairs take physical control with boots on the ground and that's when they can start thinking about getting a diffuser down usually on the marble plinth that we can see in the middle of the room there or on one of the numerous desks and the reason for that is that there will be a focus on defending this site from downstairs in archives so we can get down there in archives with the defense nitros Holes have been opened up. You can see them all there. And we try to defend against that plant vertically. That's generally what you're going to see from both sides. What we're seeing from chat when we asked who's going to be able to take the map win here, we got an 89% prediction for Team Liquid. Only 7% believing in the chance of Santos bringing this one back. And that's looking like the way it is going to go. As Team Liquid now are in a position to close the game down right here, right now, into this deciding round. Santos, they're on the attack. Let's see if the aggression is going to be coming out. Skadina taking a heavy-footed approach as he charges in early on they will be able to at least use the cams that they've got set up there with the bulletproof camera in the back to get the information over relay that to the rest of liquid and understand exactly where he is he's utilizing info of his own though as the drone does a bit of reconnaissance scouring ahead and spotting out two of the defending players of team liquid here you can see that top floor push coming along actually the opposite way to that which I predicted. I think they can see um, or have probably scoped out the fact that there are Team Liquid defenders trying to really physically hold a high line of defence there in admin and really prevent anybody getting in from the repel. So they've come in from the opposite side console and they're going to work along through meeting and try and clear these Liquid players out. But it is going to be very, very important that they do so. If they start losing men on the top floor this round and map will slip away from them very very quickly we can see they are sort of close to coming together here cypress pushing through on the ash but maybe just lacking a little bit of confidence in this fight at the moment he's got no backup he's going to challenge that on his own if he needs to and right now he's just using that ping system to notify his team that there's somebody playing at the top of visa stairs but if he goes and challenges this in the cqc environment that it is with that shotgun in his face he's likely to lose that fight quickly I'm running out. Players running out as well as their life force is being sapped out from underneath them. Now into a four versus four with 45 seconds left. Time is whizzing by. They're still holding strong. Liquid effectively can't afford to just play angles, play the trade game. Mobile phones are ringing though as they're getting cold callers trying to sell them insurance. And let's see if they can insure around here as Wag will be dropped. You've lost your ace. Mighty barely survives in the encounter versus Moringa and does punish him. PSK on the peak tries to overwhelm but misses with the initial contact off the back of the cave. There is another trade and Cypress overwhelms Palu. This should be around for Santos unless it slips in the line. 
last few seconds. They need to either find the frags ASAP or get that diffuser down. PSK in a late round post plant position could have tried to have been a nuisance maker, but he's been spotted and fragged and it all falls on to Nesk. Diffuser down, post plant activated. Can this man clutch a one versus four to seal the deal for Liquid? Walks into the site, they've given him a freebie. They had no idea he was coming from Spiral Staircase. Works his magic onto Mighty. Drops in the reload as well with the finesse. The diffuser is in a close angle, but his head's been knocked off, and Nesk is going to be dead. Nothing Nesk could really do in that situation. Spotted out, they knew exactly where he was coming from, I think, at that point. And there you can see barely any pixels visible of his head. Very nice finish and great round there from Santos. I was a little bit concerned for them at about the minute mark. I thought they were being a little bit too tentative on that top floor take. They were unable to really push through and get the aggressive hold that they needed to. But they managed it and they secured everything they needed. Got themselves a couple of kills. 4-2 on the board was really what swung it for them and PSK just completely shut down there um, near the archive site and there was just no denial available for the plant attempt whatsoever there. So Santos, they keep themselves fighting here, Jackie. There is still a lot of work for them to do. Liquid, of course, have guaranteed themselves two points. They have won the first map, as we can see up at the top of the screen there, if you were wondering, Theme Park 7-1. Um, very nicely displayed on the right side next to Santos, as that was their map pick. And we are now in Consulate, which is map two of this best of two. So Team Liquid guaranteed two points, and we'll be looking to secure all three with another round. But they are going to need a successful defense now. The problem for Santos comes in the shape of the top floor because if you remember last time, Jackie, Team Liquid were so dominant up here on the top floor. Oh, exactly. Because it's also the fact that it plays into the aggression that we normally see coming out from Liquid. They're able to go for those wide peaks. There's a lot of run out potential. There's a lot of angles that you can swing into where you can probably net yourself an initial entry frag from a nice position that you're not going to suffer a loss. You're not going to trade. You can get a pick, back off, and keep alive into the late round. If we'll see that, though, is another matter. We'll see if they are going to go for anything too aggressive. Moringa has tried to remove two of the lower barricade positions there, so he can peek out and at least get a read to try and counter those runouts. It seems like we were going to see Dina drop down a Claymore, but he's kept that in reserve until a better opportunity arises. Banshee just getting tagged out there and we've seen those Banshees used to great effect at the top of Yellow Stairs. It really does prevent a push quite often when they've been present. We've seen teams just forego the Yellow Stairs and look to push towards admin instead. It can be that decisive and can be very difficult to deal with. But as I commented, coming into this, teams don't seem to um, have been too scared on the attack to deal with those Banshees, treating them much like Maestro cameras and using the nades or the Ash Breaching Chargers to just get in there and remove them and... I suppose it is a very similar process, really, and they've been quite successful with it, but we'll see just how much of an impact that one has on the round. We can see Santos have got one man out there on the rappel. They're going to be supporting Yellow Stairs' push from the skylight as well, just looking to burn all that utility out. But there's still going to be a lot of work to be done even when they achieve that now. Wag on the upside down rappel with the ace. He's just going to open up a line of sight through to meeting. And that is just going to enable a long angle to be held and prevent any challengers coming in from that direction. A challenge that is closing out this game, apparently, for Team Liquid. They haven't had the brightest last couple of rounds. It's definitely been a resurgence for Santos, but this could still be the opportunity to end it before it gets awkward, before you only have one round to decide whether it's going to be a draw or not. And they have one trick up their sleeve. Actually, it seems like they've got two. The wide swing from both Palu and Nesk, the two big guard dogs of the side of Team Liquid. Something has caused them to run amok, and they do just that, peeking out, securing the first two frags. Trade back coming round from Cyprus at least, but he's going to have to continue on and create an oasis for Santos in this round, Tim, as it's down to a two versus three. With 40 seconds left, Santos, you've got to clutch this or you're going to be dropping out and losing the series 2-0. Takes out the default cam, just tries to prevent as much information as possible. Cypress deep in sight now, but Diffuser is not in hand. It was with Wag on the ace, and he was taken down. So Mighty will go and collect that, and it just burns another 10 seconds. But vitally, Sexy Cake still downstairs on the pulse. He's just keeping an eye on everything going on above him. Yellow pings raining out there just to try and give any idea to his teammates that he can of the location of the plant now. 
They have moved into meeting and will be looking to get things down. Mighty at this point is successful in securing that plant, but Palu manages to get the kill onto Cypress. Easy shutdown for Ness, and that will leave us with Team Liquid to mop things up here. It is all down to Ness just to disable this diffuser, and that is going to be the round, the map, and the match as Liquid take three points in their opening fixture here in LATAM Stage 2. There we go, Liquid in the end, locking it down. It took a little bit more time on the second map compared to the overwhelming spanking that occurred back on Theme Park. But they do take the 2-0 in the series and make their break with a boatload of points, Tim. Very promising start from Team Liquid there. As you say, the 7-1 was absolutely dominant on Theme Park, but Santos have put up a good account of themselves there. They've shown good resilience. They've fought their way back into things. It was never going to be easy against Team Liquid on Consulate. And